Alright everybody, so I know a lot of people are choosing more and more to have at-home weddings because of circumstances going on in the world right now. Or some people just prefer to have at-home weddings and now it's just kind of like a great excuse to be able to have a smaller, more intimate at-home wedding. So anyway, today I'm going to give you five ideas that you might want to incorporate into your wedding, your at-home wedding, in order to make it feel a little bit more special if you're kind of at a loss for ideas. So hopefully one or two or maybe all five of these ideas will help you out. If they do, please let me know and then stick around and watch some of my other wedding videos on this channel I usually talk about small wedding ideas and creative wedding ideas and just like things that I like budget-friendly stuff uh, because I'm not planning on having a really big expensive wedding and so I'm trying to find ways to game the wedding industry and find find other ways of doing things. So if this is interesting to you, please be sure to subscribe and check out some of my other wedding videos. Okay, so the first idea on my list is to, now this is not gonna work for everybody, but this is something that I have loved since like I watched this in an episode of Girls like 10 years ago, um, is to make your at-home wedding actually a surprise wedding. And the way this would work is that you would invite all of your nearest and dearest to an engagement party instead of to your wedding. By calling this an engagement party, you ensure that the people who you love and you really want to be there will be there. If you invite them to a birthday party or something like that, maybe they will choose other plans over your birthday. I mean, they shouldn't, but maybe they would. Um, so it's, it's a good idea to invite them like with official invitations or whatever, like make it seem as legit as possible that they're invited to your engagement party. And then at some point, the officiant opens up a book and is like, we are gathered here today to celebrate the marriage of so-and-so and so-and-so. Uh, this actually happened to me, a, a friend of mine did this. She invited us all over. She didn't do it as an engagement party. So a lot of people didn't show up, um, but she invited us all over for a cocktail party at her apartment. We all went over and then there was just this guy who just opened up a book and started started doing the wedding ceremony and it was awesome the reaction was really really we were shocked right so if you're kind of a laid-back couple who likes to surprise people this could be a way to make it super special and super memorable all right guys the second thing that's gonna be really really important it's something that you can do but really something that you should do is to rearrange the space that you're using for your wedding and you can double up use the same space for the both the ceremony and the reception no problem especially if you don't have the option of using a backyard if you're just having your living room for everything so it's really important that you you rearrange the space so that it's as big it feels as big and also as cozy as possible even for your small number of guests I'm assuming if you're having an at-home wedding you're having quite a small guest count that's not true for everybody but I think for most people and so we want to make the space look as as big as possible but as possible but also as inviting as possible and there's a few ways that you can do that so I've stolen a few ideas from like interior designers online and they all say that to make a space look bigger you should use larger pieces of art so if you have like any kind of big vases or big plants definitely include those in the space or if you have the option of having like ceiling to floor curtains if you can install curtain rods temporarily something like this it just elongates the room it makes the ceiling seem higher than they are which is really great for transforming a small living room into what feels like a larger event space the next thing you're going to want to do is to remove any unnecessary furniture from the room so any furniture at all any end tables or coffee tables that are not being used for the wedding remove them put them in another room just for the event and then a tip if you're going to be doubling up using the same space for both the ceremony and the reception is to have like your arch at kind of the head of whatever space the arch is kind of like where you get where, where you're getting married obviously and then your chairs are maybe lining the room or just in a semicircle around the arch and then when it comes time for the reception, everybody can just use that space in the middle to stand up and mingle, or they can just go back to their chairs and relax. They kind of have the option. You could do rows as well, and then just push the rows back against the wall during the, the so-called reception, which I'm assuming if you're having an at-home wedding, your reception will be really chill, really relaxed. If you are having dancing, that middle part could become like a sort of a dance floor. And you can have an aisle runner even, like have an aisle runner running through the semicircle 
into um, up up to the arch. I hope this makes sense. I feel like I can see it all in my head, but I don't know if I'm explaining it super well. What you want to do is to make the space feel as cozy and as big as possible using some of these techniques. Obviously, make sure you have seats for everybody, that everybody always has a place that they can sit down and be comfortable and chat with the other guests. The third item on my list is also related to decor, especially if you're having your wedding inside, you wanna take this opportunity to decorate using a lot of greenery and then also fairy lights and or candles. So you can use potted plants for this, um, again, make sure, try to get like larger potted plant potted plants or trees that you can put in the event space in your living room to make it feel more natural like maybe you are outside. The really really great thing about a lot of these wedding decor trends that you find on Pinterest are that they tend to be really simplistic and that means that they're really budget friendly. So lots of greenery and then like white candles, white fairy lights, and these things don't cost a lot of money, especially if you consider that you're gonna probably keep those potted plants after your wedding. And you might already have a lot of potted plants in your house that you can use. For the lighting, really think about this. Don't rely on like one overhead light. It doesn't it doesn't create like that cozy environment that you want. Instead, plan on having several lamps spaced out and or having candles and fairy lights. You can use the candles that are not real if you're afraid of like people knocking over candles in a small space. And you can definitely string some fairy lights on your ceiling just to have this vibe, this intimate cozy vibe. If you're not sure where to find any of these things, I'll do a little bit of research and I'll put some links below for you. Number four is a really sentimental way to make your at-home wedding feel special. And this might feel a little bit cheesy to some people, but I think other people will really get a kick out of it. And that is to give out awards to all of your guests. Assuming that your guest count is really small, like definitely less than 20 people because you don't want this to go on and on forever. But the idea is that you would give out cute little awards, maybe cute little trophies or something like that, that say like best father ever, or like cutest ring bearer, or best father of the groom. I don't know, like very simple kind of awards, but then when they, and then everybody claps, and when they come up to accept the award, you say a few pre-planned out nice things about them, essentially thanking them for coming to your wedding and for being such a special, important person in your life. This is just a way that you can create this sweet moment of sincerity at your wedding that you probably couldn't do at a larger wedding, like a 200-person wedding, just because not everybody would know the people who you're talking about. And number five on my list is simply to make your arch as cool as possible so that it can double up as your DIY photo booth backdrop and also the backdrop for all of your photos. So don't go, don't like skip, skimp on your wedding arch for your at-home wedding. Really take your time, make it um, as you as possible. So if that means like getting neons or like a huge amount of flowers, real or fake, doesn't matter, or using macrame or some other like cool ribbons, like go explore Pinterest and look at all the amazing arch options and then make your dream arch in your living room and use it for all of your photos. What other ideas can we use for our small at-home wedding guys? Please let us know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.